Today on Applied Science, I thought we'd talk about building AM radio transmitters, and then in the second half of the video, I'd like to show you the upcoming projects on the channel, which I think you'll find interesting. But first, AM. Um, if you restore antique AM radios as a hobby, you've probably run into this problem. So after spending hours getting the radio working, uh, you'll find that it sounds terrible. But it has nothing to do with the radio. The problem is that AM broadcast just doesn't uh, have any good music on it. And uh, I thought that in a sort of a major metro area there would at least be one station that plays old music, but no. So, um, you know, you could just cut the speaker wires inside the radio and put and hide an MP3 player in there, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of restoring the AM radio. So in my case, I bought a 1938 Ford pickup truck, and it likely has the original 1938 radio in there. And after a little bit of work, I got it working, but like I say, there's just no stations. And so what we want to do is build a simple little AM radio transmitter, and then we can uh, you know, broadcast decent music to our own radio. So here's the schematic and the circuit built up on a perf board, just point-to-point -point wiring. And uh, the trick here is that we have a 5-volt oscillator, but we're going to feed it 3.3 volts from this regulator here. And the idea is that we can make the voltage go up and down uh, relative to 3.3, and the oscillator won't burn out because it's a 5-volt component. Uh, but luckily, it also keeps oscillating when the voltage is lower than 3.3. So um, at steady state, let's say there's no headphones connected to this circuit, we have 3.3 volts going through the coil and there'll be a little bit of a voltage drop here and then into the oscillator. And our output is just a one megahertz square wave at you know three volts, let's say, or 3.1 or something. Now, if we put an audio signal into the transformer, uh, the, the uh, impedance is matched such that the uh, headphone jack is supplying a good amount of current through this smaller winding of the transformer and then we end up with a much bigger voltage signal on the uh, longer winding of the transformer. So the current adds and subtracts to what's already flowing through from this DC supply and that's what gives us the AC wave superimposed on top of the DC there. Okay, so let's hear this thing in action. I'm just going to play some music from the phone. And as you can hear, it actually sounds pretty good. I was actually really impressed with the fidelity, and as it happens, the matching transform and everything just about have the right levels so that this all works out. So the volume is pretty high on the phone, but it doesn't have to be ridiculous. And the amount of modulation that we get uh, into the AM signal is, is about right. I mean, it's close. And I'll put the part numbers to all this stuff in the description. Um, if we look at the scope, the purple trace is the audio signal going in from the headphones, and the yellow is the output from the oscillator. So we can see our carrier being modulated by the audio here. And if we do a single and zoom in, uh, you can see the, the one megahertz uh, carrier there. And if we kind of scroll around, you can kind of see the carrier change height relative to the audio signal that's going in. So it's all working fine. Oh, I should also point out, yeah, AM should not be a square wave because we've got all kinds of harmonics mixed in there. Uh, but even still, this is a super hacky circuit and the fact that it works so well with just three components is kind of its main feature. Okay, so that's all well and good, but since this is an automotive application, what I really want to happen is you know, I get in the truck and turn on the ignition and good music starts coming out of the radio uh, without me fiddling with my phone or plugging in an mp3 player or queuing up the music or whatever. So I went searching around for sort of built-in uh, OEM mp3 players and was surprised that these are actually pretty common. So this is five dollars on eBay, including shipping from Asia and the remote. Five dollars, I mean it's crazy. And so I got a couple of these just to see what it's all about, and these are actually surprisingly good. You can put an SD card in here or a thumb drive. It even has an FM radio in here too. And uh, it's a single chip, and uh, its output is line out. So originally I tried connecting this to the previous circuit, uh, thinking that it might have enough power uh, to drive like a headphone style thing, uh, but it doesn't. And uh, so I'll show you what I did to make this work. Um, I also want to point out that uh, one of the main features of this thing is that when power is applied to it, it automatically starts playing 
the last song that it was that it was uh, playing. So if you have 100 MP3s on this SD card and you cut power to it and then put power back on, it will uh, pick up where it left off at the beginning of that song. So it, it basically accomplishes everything I want with the power switching on and off and starting to play the music again. So I started probing this circuit and found out that the two output lines, it has a left and right output that are meant to be connected to your car's amplifier. And as I mentioned, it's not really a headphone jack output. It's actually a high impedance, very weak signal output. So it, it won't work with our previous transformer circuit. So I traced these back and it's actually just the connections through C22 and C26. Those are the coupling capacitors. And then it goes right into the chip here. So uh, since, we, since this thing doesn't output enough total power to actually modulate our one megahertz oscillator, what we need to do is add an active component to amplify the amount of power in that audio signal so that we can modulate our amplifier. And I did that with an op amp. There's actually another nice convenient little happenstance. Uh, the whole circuit here is a 3.3 volt circuit and that's the 3.3 volt regulator there. And the chip is set up such that if you, if you tack or if you um, steal the audio signal before it goes through those AC coupling capacitors, it is centered on about 1.6 volts DC and the audio signal swings, you know, about a volt or something like that, around 1.6 volts DC or half a volt or something like that. So conveniently, if we add a voltage doubler to it with an op amp, then the baseline becomes 3.3 volts and we have like a one volt or even one and a half volt audio signal superimposed on top, just like what we need to modulate to, to give to our oscillator to get a decent AM signal out. So that's what I did. Uh, set up an op amp here, and since we don't have bipolar voltage supplies, uh, I used a op amp that can um, go down to ground, but it, it, this one happens not to be a rail-to-rail -rail op amplifier. So I have I added a 5 volt regulator, so we're giving the, the uh, op amp 5 volts, and then the signal directly from the MP3 player chip, and it doubles that voltage, and we just put that right into the oscillator. So let's hear how that sounds. Okay, I'm going to apply 13 volts here, uh, simulating the car's electrical system being turned on. And the thing boots up and accesses the SD card that I've got in there, and you can see it's transmitting. We turn our radio up. Sounds pretty good. And the fact that it has a little bit of, like, AM sort of characteristic noise on there is kind of part of the whole point of doing this, right? I mean, if there's a little bit of static, and it's, it should sound like an AM radio, basically, so that is kind of okay. Um, I'll zoom in here so you can see what the box looks like. Okay, so here we are stealing the audio signal before the output coupling capacitor. And there's our op amp. We're only using a quarter of that chip. This one happens to be an LM324, but it, it really doesn't matter. Almost any op amp would work. And then this funny setup here, I have two RCA jacks and uh, coupling this into the antenna wiring for the car was kind of a little bit of a challenge. You can't just have like a paper clip hanging out. That doesn't provide enough coupling to the car's antenna. So what I did was I cut the coax going from the radio to the roof antenna and put RCA jacks on it so I can basically just slip this in line with the car's antenna wiring. And then if by some miracle AM broadcast is, you know, okay or worthwhile listening to again, I can just tune off of this station. Okay, and so then you can kind of see how this whole thing looks here. What I'll do is mount this, you know, in a hidden location in the truck cab, maybe even underneath the radio or something. And, the neat, and that would actually allow me to use the remote uh, without this being visible, or at least kind of hidden under there. So it's a pretty stealth setup. Basically, it's just as if AM radio broadcast was worth listening to. You know, you just start the car up and, hey, it sounds good. Okay, so let's talk about some upcoming projects on Applied Science. Okay, project number one, I'm going to do a cable modem teardown and talk about cam modulation, which is pretty interesting. And I have a whole bunch of test equipment from tech that allow me to show uh, cam really interestingly and uh, hopefully talk about um, the firmware that's in this modem too. I was actually able to get some interesting stuff out of it. Okay, project number two, here we are at the scanning electron microscope. I recently backed a couple Kickstarters that are going to let me do some really interesting stuff with this. I've got 
the latest Teensy from Paul Stoffergen, and uh, I need some help with the high-speed USB interface on that. So if anyone knows who to talk to about that, I'd much appreciate it. And I also backed uh, the Mechaduino project, which is a low-cost servo motor project made by Tropical Labs. And so the idea here is I've got three axes of servo motor, and I'm going to connect them up to the controls, the motion controls on the scope, and then do image acquisition with the Teensy while controlling the servos so that I can make animations with the SEM in a fully automated way. And then this guy is way faster than previous Teensy's, so I can do much better uh, video acquisition, especially if you get high-speed high USB working. Okay, speaking of high speed, uh, my friend David Kronstein has built this amazing high speed camera and we're going to be seeing a lot more stuff with this in the future. Uh, since this happens to be completely wireless, it's battery powered, uh, what I want to do is put that high speed camera on a really high speed motion platform. This one's linear, but I have some other ideas in mind. And then I can move the camera at really high speeds while capturing high speed video and that should make for some really interesting dynamic shots. I've been collecting parts to make a really high pressure chamber, like 100,000 PSI pressure chamber, and you can do some pretty weird tricks with that. And so I've, I got this gauge, which even goes up to 150,000 PSI, and have also been buying um, these unusual high pressure fittings that are used in water jet cutters. So this thing's been kind of on the books for a while, but uh, I think eventually we are going to get to this and try some extreme pressure experiments. I also have plans to build a really powerful and precise temperature control system. So these thermoelectric cooler units are uh, really common these days. And what we can do is put one on this off-the-shelf CPU cooler. If you haven't seen these, it's actually a pretty good deal for what you get. It's like 60 bucks or something like that. And you get a, a pre-filled radiator system so that if you put the module here, it has a really good uh, heat sink on the other side. And then the other half of that project is a really uh, powerful, beefy, bipolar DC supply. I should also mention I've had some temperature measurement equipment donated to my channel, which I haven't gotten to yet, but it, trust me, it's coming, and uh, I do appreciate the donation. And finally, I have been working on the gecko tape idea. Uh, someone came up with a really, really great idea of anodizing aluminum to create this porous structure and then casting silicone into the porous alumina. And I've had some early experiments with that. Nothing's worked out quite yet, but uh, that's still in the works, too. Okay, see you next time. Bye.